Hello everyone. Today I jotted down some thoughts on dialectics on Telegram and I thought I would uh, record them just to get uh, everybody's opinions on uh, what I'm thinking about at the moment. I'm talking about dialectics and I'm talking about strategy. Now, owing to time, I don't have any fancy graphics or anything. Uh, this is just kind of off the cuff, as it were. But when I did a video like this uh, around Christmas time, people seem to like it. So I'm experimenting with doing more videos of this kind. So let's make a start. I have become interested in the dangers of dialectics and how a strategy based on Julius Eveler's no dialogue might work. Essentially, you want the enemy to enter into dialogue with your points, but to treat the enemy only as a creature to be studied under a microscope. There are two types of dialectics that favor the enemy. Let's label these progressive and subversive. In the progressive dialectic, they simply put a stupid idea out there. Let's say, I don't know, 11-year-old boys transitioning their sex and allow a discourse to arise around this issue. Here, any reaction, positive or negative, fuels their cause. In the subversive dialectic, on the other hand, they instead seize on some positive principle that you or your society hold sacred. Let's say the First Amendment in the USA, and then they'll work to reinterpret that to mean the opposite of what it once did. Uh, so, you know, so in the case of the First Amendment, it may be something like um, hate speech is not free speech, something like this. Now, when the principle is evoked, it works on two separate layers of meaning, i.e. when they say free speech, they actually mean something different from when you f say free speech. And you've seen how that works time and again when it comes to words like racism, sexism, y you name it. Now, in both cases, the correct response is something that I cannot repeat here. But since we live in a time in which that won't be possible, the correct response has to be no dialogue. As Evola said, there is no compromise with subversion. The principle of no dialogue means that you never answer their BS. It simply does not warrant a response. Your own moral framework is correct. You debate with friends to refine your own points, but the enemy is only there to be destroyed, even if it's in the very long run. Now, the inverse of the above is the dissident dialectic, whereby the system is continuously forced to respond to our talking points. A neat example of this uh, was seen recently when trending on Twitter, there was this fact check that said, the COVID-19 vaccine is not linked to neurodegenerative diseases, fact checkers say. I mean, I hadn't heard they, I hadn't heard anybody claim that in the first place. So, you know, I think it's kind of strange that they're now putting out that fact check, if that makes any sense. I believe things like this only serve to damage the enemy. Who controls the media? There's no way for the regime to answer that question that doesn't further dissident ends in some way, and so on and so forth. So no dialogue, get the message out and force them to react to us and never vice versa. And here are some final thoughts on dialectics. Five key points now that I've laid out. Number one, in poker, there is a mental state that people get into called tilt, whereby discipline goes out of the window and the player increasingly goes for broke, making ever more rash decisions. This, believe it or not, is a tendency of the type of people who tend to run the media, especially when they feel cornered and it can be observed all through history. I believe that the more this state can be induced, the better. Number two, Joel Davis is right that the regime attempts to play no dialogue with us, but it has shown that it simply cannot help itself, quote, debunk, fact check, and so on. I believe every time they do this is an own goal, and that that stuff, you know, when they're doing the fact checking, has negative persuasive power. That is, it actually puts whatever the, whatever it is they're trying to debunk um, into the mind of the reader. 
Uh, and this is something that actually Donald Trump used to his advantage time and time again. And it seems that they have not uh, learned from it in four or five years now. Third, coming back to those who control the media, theirs, as opposed to the generic leftist tendency, is towards total destruction of the enemy combined with a total silencing of opposition to the point where they are just cartoon villains that nobody would ever read a la Mustache Man and Co. Our goal should be to exploit this tendency by attempting to ever expand the range of things they attempt to label with this cartoon villainy. I'm talking about Rolling Stone attacking NoFap as some sort of uh, <clears throat> Nazi uh, trope, uh, or some weasel journalists attacking, uh, you know, a Bronze Age pervert and his gym bros as fascist, this sort of thing. I'd lean away from playing the villain, a la Rockwell or Spencer, as much as possible and lean into things that will make it seem absurd to the normie when they inevitably lash out and attack us. Fourth, direct engagement with their ideas, with their arguments, and so on, is not only a waste of time, but also actively harmful. This, I'm afraid to say, is Sargon, still a friend of mine, reading CRT and trying to use it back on them. I even see it a little bit in a different form uh, in the kind of white nationalist circles, um, when they attempt to play a white grievance politics, you know, they use kind of victim narratives about uh, white people not being able to get welfare and so on. Uh, this is where dialectics are dangerous, as you slowly transform into them, as Labour transformed into Tony Blair and as Tory transformed into David Cameron. There is already a dialectic in the two-party system in which both sides are totally controlled. The regime is now in the process of doing this to what was once the alt-right and the alt-light, as well as to its official public faces. It is expert at co-opting and containment. This is why I continue to caution overly getting invested in any single narrative, for example, COVID, since this is what the system can deal with best. Boomer truth and its moral frameworks must be overturned entirely. There is no winning through their system. And finally, fifth, I've noticed a lot of conceptual confusion since COVID started over the issue of freedom. Liberal democracy is their system. This simply means rule by merchants who use the smokescreen of democracy to mask their oligarchic powers and the legal fictions of liberalism to provide protections for themselves. In this system, the media is used to control the populace through heavy propaganda. This system is, and has always been, totalitarian. Spengler is very good on this, writing as long ago as 1918. Contra-liberal teachings, it does not leave you alone because it cannot leave you alone. People trying to get back to the 1990s or even the 1950s have to get it out of their minds that people were, quote, free back then. The workings of the system are just more visible to us now. There can be no freedom through their system. Theirs is the freedom to be propagandized to by rich men. Many COVID activist boomers end up arguing for freedom with reference to the Nazis, as if the West, from 1945 to 2019, was some bastion of liberty. You must disrupt this frame whenever you see it. If they lied to you about this, what else did they lie to you about? Point out, for example, that George Orwell was writing about Britain in 1948, based on James Burnham's ideas from the managerial revolution. Boomers railing against COVID are prime to have their entire worldview overturned with some well-placed pills. All right. Thank you very much, folks. Let me know uh, what you make of this in the chat. Um, I'll just try to find some like pretty patterns or images to, to go over while I'm talking. Um, treat this like a video essay. All right. Now get out. Foundations of Physics is now available on the Academic Agency. 
The course is tailored to anyone interested in understanding the basics of Newtonian mechanics while strengthening their skills in algebra, calculus, and data processing. By signing up to Foundations of Physics, you will gain access to nine lectures on forces, motion, momentum, energy, and rotation. Nine illustrative practical experiments that can be conducted using commonly available materials. More than 100 practice problems curated and arranged to expand your knowledge step by step. And most importantly, instead of half-baked explanations by board professors or graduate students conscripted into being teaching assistants, you will receive personalized responses to any question you might have about the course material. Foundations of Physics is an intensive training program that requires you to put in a solid effort. By doing so, you're guaranteed to sharpen your analytical skills and knowledge of the material world. Sign up today on the Academic Agency.